In this lesson, we're going to talk about several products from Hunter Industries. They have three main rotors that you're going to find in residential and light commercial applications and of course some larger rotors that you'll see in sports fields, golf courses and whatnot. But uh, there's also two smaller versions with half inch inlets. Most of the, the four inch or five inch rotors that we talk about have three quarter inch inlets. But Hunter has two options with half inch inlets or designed for smaller areas, lower flows. And those are the, the PGJ and the SRM. I'm not going to give you a whole lot of figures for those. All that data is readily available. But we are going to talk about the PGP adjustable the PGP Ultra, and the i20. I'm actually holding an i20 in my hand here. And one of the things that's a little bit different about Hunter Industries is the keys that you get. Um, they give you a, a little key here that's got a couple of finger holes and then just almost a flat blade screwdriver head on this side and a hex key on this side. The nozzle retention screw that you find in Hunters has a hex pattern on it. With the PGP adjustable, the baseline, all you get is the hex key part on the nozzle retention screw. But when you get to the PGP Ultra and the i20, it also has a flat blade slot in there the where you could use if you just want to have one key around to, to do everything then the, uh, the PGP Ultra and the i20 have both the hex key and a slot on the same screw there. And with all of these heads, you know, it gives you an end here or an ability, a slot to push down into the head and manually pull this up. What we're looking here is an i20 with um, a stainless steel riser, which is optional. And pretty much all of these manufacturers have a little tool that you can fit onto the shaft here that clamps it and holds it up while you change the nozzle. If your hand strength is decent, you really don't use that um, tool. I don't, I'm not sure if I've ever used it in my career. I just hold them up with my hands. The, the spring's a little tougher on the I-20, a little stronger than the others. But let's go and start with the very basic rotor, which is the PGP Adjustable. It has a radius of 22 to 52 feet, has 27 different nozzles that are available. You have your standard selection of nozzles, basically from one and a half gallon all the way up to eight gallon per minute. And then you've also got some low angle nozzles. And you've also have uh, the ones that come with the regular PGP is just a, a red nozzle set, but you can get ones that have a little better pattern that, that are blue nozzles that you can get uh, as options for the, the base packages. But when you get to the, the PGP Ultra and the i20, they have an MPR nozzle set, meaning that on one zone you can have a 90 degree head, a 180 degree head, and a 360 degree head, say, and they'll all have a match precipitation rate. That's kind of hard to achieve and also get the radiuses the same and not cause a design nightmare. But Hunter has a great set of optional nozzles that you can use for the, the Ultra, the PGP Ultra, and the I-20. Okay, so the warranties are a little different. Hunter extends for the PGP Adjustable, the baseline model, a two-year warranty. And for the PGP Ultra and I-20, they have a five-year warranty. So the, they have uh, check valves, optional check valves for all of their products. Even check valves are available in the, the smaller half-inch inlet products, the PGJ and the SRM. But um, the, the check valves are slightly different. In the base model, the PGP, it has four foot of holdback. It means that it'll hold back four foot of elevation drop, right? And we know that water has a weight of 0.433 pounds per vertical foot of elevation rise. So it, the, the base model, the PGP adjustable, can hold back four feet, but the PGP Ultra and the I-20 can hold back 10 feet. So let's see um, some other things we need to talk about. For the PGP Ultra and the I-20, it has an automatic arc return. It's what Hunter calls it. So if it's during, doing its thing during a normal course of business and somebody grabs this thing and twists it out of its pattern, it's going to find its way back into that set pattern called an automatic arc return. 
the PGP Ultra and the i20 have non-strippable drives, which means if they do grab a hold of this and twist it, it's not going to strip the gears out and it'll fall back into line. Pretty fantastic. Um, on these two models, the PGP Ultra and the i20, you can get the reclaimed water ID, which is the purple cap on the top, pretty much like all manufacturers do. And for these two models, you have a pressure reducing body. I think on other manufacturers, they have a pressure reducing stem. The Hunter is a pressure reducing body. The i20 also has an option for the stainless steel riser that we just looked at here, which is a great feature for vandal prone areas. It gives it just an extra layer of toughness so this shaft doesn't get broken by foot traffic or just whatever, maybe a car driving over the area or something like that. And it also has a flow stop, which is the only, you only get in the I-20. And what we have here is a shut off right on top of the head, right in the very middle. And, um, but you can completely cut the head off up here. And that's a fantastic option for shutting the head off while it's running so that you can replace the nozzle and not have to shut the whole valve, uh, the whole zone off just to replace a nozzle. But it also helps if you're checking for a leak on the zone side of the pipes that's no, normally not under pressure until the zone is turned on. And if you've got a leak there and kind of a wet area that's unidentifiable because you can't see it while the zone's running because the ground's already wet, you can turn that zone on and then shut off every head and then wait for the wet, stop, uh, the wet spot to pop up. A hunter adjustment in progress. We're looking at the, the limits here. And I'm letting the uh, the left limit spin around and see what it's all about, see where it stops. But on the Hunter, all of these heads have the right limit is set and the left limit is adjustable. So we're seeing what's happened there. Twist it back to the right. And so to set the right limit, you know, the best method, it would be to use your hands to grab a hold of the shaft and twist it. But I generally use channel locks myself. We're pretty used to it here. Our ground is super tough, and once a head gets kind of set in the ground, there's no way that you can twist it with your hands and set it in the ground. So we typically use channel locks for that, and you can use a channel lock on the shaft to adjust that right limit. And here we are adjusting the left limit by sticking the um, the the flathead side of this tool down into the fitting that's about 9 p.m. on the head if the, the nozzle is at the 12 midnight. Um, so we see here, so we've made an adjustment to the left side. And also if we want to shorten up the radius, we can put the tool down into the nozzle retention screw and then run that down until it impedes the flow of water coming out of the nozzle and what that'll do is shorten your radius and flatten out the stream and you'll drop a whole lot more water in the the short and medium lengths but when you shorten these heads up it doesn't necessarily make a better pattern okay and this is something i've seen i think i've mentioned it before in this course that i've seen technicians before that when they install a head once they turn the system on and run it, not only do they adjust the arc, but they'll go and on every head, they'll run that nozzle retention screw down until it just barely impedes it and flattens it out. And they say it makes a better pattern. But if we look at the, the data from the manufacturers and they have visible graphs of what their patterns are, I wouldn't adjust it in that situation unless you you have to shorten it up to not hit a house or a window or something. These heads are designed to run their very best and have the very best pattern when they're installed in a head-to-head -head situation and they're at full extension, meaning the, the stream of water come out the nozzle is not impeded by the screw any. That is the best, most uh, how should I describe this, the most even watering between the nozzle and the tip of the stream as it goes out 30 to 40 feet, whatever it is, it's the most efficient when it's fully extended. So hope that helps you a bit.